G'day YouTube, this is Dave Seth with Solo1.net and this is part two of our series of 3D printing tutorials. Now, this is going to be an expansion on part one and we're going to be covering modeling a real world piece, real world part. Now, uh, today we're going to be modeling a bracket for some 8020 aluminum extrusion. And if you've never seen that before, what it looks like, kind of looks like that. You know, you have um, you know, either square or rectangular, and it has slots all the way down the sides and the tops and whatnot. And you can put uh, T nuts and bolts, and you can bolt things to the sides and tops, and even get more of this stuff and you know bolt it all together and make a box or a frame or a, you know whatever really you want. There's so many things you can do with it. Um, I'll use it for a lot of my CNC machines. And uh, so I'm going to be making a bracket that connects two of these, you know, kind of at a right angle uh, at a square. So it will look like this if we take another piece, put it right about there. Right. So, you know, I might be making a frame for a machine or something. Now I need to join these two pieces together. Um, now they have you can buy these brackets you know you get them and they they have like right angles and T's and squares and you know corners and whatnot they're really nice um, I'm gonna try 3d printing mine because you know why not I have a printer why not you know print my own parts so I'm going to model uh, a bracket for doing that now to do that what I'm going to do now this this model that I have here is to exact size meaning in blender units it's uh, from from here to here it's like uh, 25.4 blender units or, or millimeters which is exactly one inch which is the uh, dimension of the stuff that I actually get when I purchase it so I created this model so that when I uh, do my modeling I have something to as a reference to go by size wise so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what I have here to uh, to base my model off of. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add a cube. Now this cube is only you know one millimeter cubed, so we have to uh, make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to scale it on the Z axis. Scale Z. Um, we're going to make it a quarter of an inch thick. So what would that be? 3.175 millimeter. Okay. I'm gonna place it right about there. You know, it doesn't have to be <coughs> quite exact. Let's get it. Uh, move on the y-axis. Get it right in the corner. Now I'm gonna go into edit mode. Now I want this bracket to be three and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide. Now to do that we're going to have to do some metric to imperial conversion because uh, Blender operates in Blender units which I translate into millimeters which is what my printer prints but if I want something you know three and a half inches by three and a half inches I need to actually do the conversion. Now <coughs> actually these pieces are a little offset because I want the corner, excuse me, right on zero, zero. So I'm going to move these guys right about there. Okay. I'm going to take this guy, put the Y on zero. G, move it over here so that you know, it doesn't have to be you know, close enough because the 3D, 3D printer's resolution is not going to really matter much anyway. So, move that guy right back there. Now let's take our piece and put him right on the corner, right there. Okay. Now we'll go into edit mode and make sure you're on, you're in uh, wireframe mode so that uh, you know when you select things you grab all the vertices and even the ones behind the ones you know you see right there. If I just you know hit C and select these vertices, it'll select both of them. But if you're not in wireframe mode, 
you know, if you're in solid mode like this and you just, uh, you know, hit C and select that, it would only select the one kind of in front of you and the one behind it would not be selected like that. So that's why we do it in wireframe mode. <coughs> now I'm going to grab, use B for box select, I'm going to grab these top vertices here and I'm going to move them up to a Y value of 88. Point nine. Now, 88.9 in millimeters is three and a half inches. So, this is now three and a half inches tall. Now, I'm going to hit A to unselect everything. I'm going to hit B to box select again. I'm going to grab the side ones and I'm going to give it an X value of 88.9. <coughs> now, we have a three and a half inch square by quarter inch thick plate here. But this is really, you know, kind of ugly because when you tack that on your machine you don't want, you know, this, this sticking out. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to put a nice little kind of a bevel or a chamfer on it, uh, you know, cut the corner off here. To do that I'm going to hit Control R. I'm going to loop cut and it doesn't matter really where you put that because when you click to set it down I'm going to go and adjust it on the X value I'm going to give it 25.4 that's one inch and uh, unselect that I'm going to hit Control R and loop cut on the X axis put it here and give it a Y value of 25 0.4. Now that'll give us one inch, you know, cut right there. Now, I'm going to unselect everything. I'm going to hit C, select these vertices. Actually, I'll take that back. Hit escape. I'm going to select these vertices and I'm going to get rid of them. And that will, you know, remove that there. And I'm going to select, I'm just go into solid mode so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to grab these two corner vertices and this guy, hit F. I'm going to make a face, flip it up underneath here. I'm going to select these three guys, make a face. These four end guys, make a face. And we're good. That actually looks much better. Now, one of the tricks that I'm going to show you, and kind of the real point of this tutorial, is how do we drill holes in this piece, right? Because we're going to want to make some holes so that you can just put some bolts through and it'll be, you know, ready to go. You don't have to drill anything. Drilling into 3D printing really is quite messy and uh, not structurally um, sound. So, <coughs> we're going to put some mounting bolt uh, holes in here and to do that we're going to use a technique called boolean. Now I'm going to go into wireframe mode here and I'm going to put my cursor right about there, right about the center of the of the slot that this is going to go down. I'm going to try to get it as close as I can. Um, one trick also if you want to to do this, you go and you select the, th the thing here and you hit um, Shift S and go cursor to select it. Now that will put the cursor right in the where the origin point is. And then over here on the side, you just take your 3D cursor and you move up your whatever value you want to move the thing, you know, along. Um, my Y value is. I'm sorry, my X value is uh, 12.8136. If I were to copy that, actually, and put that in my Y, it should put it also in the center of this one. So it's exactly square. Now, I'm going to select my part. I'm going to hit Shift A, and this is in object mode, not edit mode. I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to add a mesh, I'm going to add a cylinder. 
Now I'm over here I'm going to give it a radius of 3.175 millimeter which is the radius um, of a hole that is one quarter inch wide. So a quarter inch is um, radius is 3.175 millimeter. So now we have something that's a quarter inch. I'm going to go into the side mode. I'm going to move it up a little bit right to about there to about the middle and I'm going to size along the z-axis like that so that it protrudes all the way through <coughs> the object. Now I'm going to go into top view. I'm going to duplicate that up along my y-axis. I'm going to throw it about I don't know, right there. Duplicate it again. Oops. What did I do there? Yeah. I goofed up there. Hit Shift D, duplicate it again along the Y axis. We'll throw it about right there. Actually, if we want to get precision about this, we'll take this guy who has a Y value of 88.9, and in my calculator here, I'm going to say 88.9 minus 12.8136. That'll give us 76.086. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll whoop, crap. We'll take select this guy. And we'll put him at 76.086. It'll kind of make it nice and square. Um, I'm going to hit select all of those. I'm going to hit Control J. That makes them all one object. And now I'm going to hit Shift D again. Just click down and then I'm going to rotate my duplicates by 90 degrees and that should put uh, some holes over here. Now what that did, because I duplicated that, um, this one right here, this, this one right here, there's actually two of them overlapping because I basically duplicated it and then rotated it. So what we're going to have to do, now I'm going to not select that, but I'm going to select all of these Hit Control J, make it all one object. Now I'm going to go into edit mode, hit W, and remove doubles. That will remove the overlapping objects. <coughs> Good. Now, go back into object mode. What we're going to do now is use these cylinders to cut holes in our pot. So I'm going to select our pot. We're going to go over here and add a modifier. Here we're going to add a boolean modifier. Now boolean is nice <coughs> because you can join two objects together. You can use one object to create a void in another object, which is what we're going to do. We're going to drill holes in our pot. So over here on the operation we're going to select difference. What that's going to do is that's going to take the difference between these cylinders and subtract them from our object. So we're going to choose difference and then the actual object which is cylinder.001 and you can see now it's actually created a bunch of vertices and drilled holes right in our object. Now if our normals were flipped or if we had something really goofy you might have some artifacts it might actually add <coughs> the cylinder to the part and that's not right and, and if that happens check your normals check any for any non-manifold um, vertices like we did in our first tutorial and that should fix that. Um, if everything's good, you see holes here, we're going to apply that and then I'm going to select these cylinders and just get rid of them. Now if we go into solid mode, select our part, go into solid mode, object mode, you can see now we have nice holes drilled in our part and this is ready for printing. Just file 
export it as a .stl and your slicer will be able to open that up and you will be able to print that object right now. Okay, so that is the end of part two on modeling with Blender for 3D printing. See you next time.